This is my interpretation of like a basket weave stitch done on the loom, of course. And I'm working it as a flat panel on one side of the sock loom too. You can work this in around. The amount of what you, what you see here are my stitch markers because wherever I have a purple stitch marker, I'm going to be knitting. And wherever there's not one, I'm going to be purling. And on the end, I have a yellow one here just to show me where I'm going to be ending, which I don't need now that I have some cast on rows. But I just did that to show myself that that's going to be the last stitch I do. So I don't keep going, but you can work in around the pattern of the four three four three may change going in a round of a loom. So go ahead and make sure if you're going to do it as a hat that you excuse me check to see. That's what makes it great with stitch markers is you can drop them down and do your pattern around to see whether or not the numbers are going to work. But you can easily adjust these numbers as well. This is not set in stone. Um, this is just kind of the way I, I do it sometimes. Now again, what we're going to do is we're going to be Oh, before I forget, I did do the cast on row, and I just did a few simple, like, about five rows of just regular knit. No need to do that. You can do the garter stitch if you don't want it to roll. I mean, I just did that to lay a foundation of stitches down before we began the basket weave. Now, what I'm going to do is, again, wherever there are my purple stitch markers, which are one, two, three, four, I'm going to knit those and purl the ones, the three here you see, without, and then knit without, you know, purling knit. And the end pegs, this one and the one over here, they're just going to be simply knitted. And that would probably be the case with any um, flat panel that you do in this. So like I said, we're going to work it as four to knit. So we grab our working yarn. Just, I do the E-wrap. You can choose to lay it across like this and knit over if you choose and do a knit like that. But I'm going to wrap it like most people do for their E-wrap. So I'm going to wrap it. And the other thing you're going to want is a stitch, a row counter. This way you're going to do about, I would say we're going to do about 10 rows of this pattern this way. So having this will help us keep track of how many rows we've done. So go ahead and knit over. Again, just knitting over where the purple stitch markers are on my loom, which are four stitches. And now we're going to bring it in the front to do our three purl stitches. And again, we're back to the knit. And this is just a medium weight worsted yarn, I think a level four. So it might work out differently too with a bulkier yarn as well. So a lot of times it's best to do a sample if you can. Just a little swatch to show you how many pegs you want to do knit, how many you want to do purl, and um, to show you how many rows down you may have to do. Okay, and now last bit of the e wrap and again like I said my last pegs on each side are going to be knitted so I can go ahead and I can wrap this all the way to the end and again you can choose to do a flat knit oops, flat knit if you want as well problem with stitch markers. Sometimes they get caught when you're trying to knit over. Okay, and now we're going to come over here and we're going to click that to show we done run row. And that's all I'm going to work back and forth doing that until I get 10 rows completed and then I'll come back and I'll show you the next step. So we've done 10 rows of our first combination and I've already moved the stitch markers and I'll explain why. Now when we first started we knitted and we had purple clips or purple loom excuse me, purple stitch markers here to indicate that and we purled and then we knit and we purled. Well what we're doing now is we're switching it up so I removed the four pegs here and moved them over here because now we're going to begin our row with purling so I don't want any stitch markers there for me and I'm going to be knitting where the purple ones are again just like in the other pattern wherever there's a stitch marker and even on the end ones I put a yellow one I'll be knitting those but now we're just switching the pattern up 
So that now we're purling the beginning of the row and knitting, and then purling, knitting, and then purling. And again, the end pegs will be knitted. So this is going to change it up. As of right now, when you look through it, excuse me, you can kind of see what we did. We knitted here, we purled, we knitted, we purled, but now we're going to alternate it. So now we're going to start with our purl, and we're going to do the same idea we did for the first 10 rows using our new stitch marker guide to show us that now we're going to switch out what we start with. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch it to start with our purl. And again, we're just going to bring the yarn in front, if it cooperates. Okay, and we're just going to purl our first rows instead of knitting them. And this is going to give us that alternating design for like our basket weave. And again, you can probably change out which, how many you want to knit and how many you want to purl. And whatever you choose, say you decide you want to do a two and two, you just need to remember after you do your first section to switch what you start with the row. If you knitted first, now we're purling. If we had purled, then we'd be knitting. So it's up to you how you do it. And again, we're going over to here. And because I've got stitch, mark stitch markers, I know that I'm going to be knitting those. And then I'm going to be purling the ones that don't have stitch markers. It's just usually easier to purl where there are no stitch markers for me, because even though I get caught up in the stitch markers when I knit sometimes, I don't get as caught up in them when I'm purling. That's why I usually leave the pegs empty for my purling and only use them when I'm knitting. Just a preference I like. Okay, and then our last one's going to be purling, these last four, but remember our last peg right here it's going to be knitted. That's why there's a stitch marker to remind me that. If you were working it around, you wouldn't need that stitch marker. You would just keep your pattern obviously going. But if you're choosing to do it as a flat panel like I am for this, for this then you would decide to put one there just to kind of remind yourself that the end ones are just knitted. And this is a great stitch to work up for like a little washcloth. Like this I'm going to probably keep, you know, you know, it'd be a nice size for like a little washcloth for a kid. And then we just wrap it and knit this over. And again, go to your row counter if you've got one and click that you did one row. And you need to get 10 rows or less. Again, we did 10 rows. This is using the sock loom too. And we ended up with a big square. You can have the square smaller, obviously, with the less amount of rows that you do. But I like the 10 for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way back and forth until I get 10 rows of this pattern of purling and knitting, purling and knitting, and purling, done, and we'll show you what it looks like. As you can see, I finished up doing another 10 rows, and if we turn it over, you can kind of see how it changes up, because here we have knitted, and here we have purled, and when we changed it up, it actually creates kind of a cool design. So you can do this for like washcloths, hats, and all that, and I would say you would do the crochet cast off on it. Depending on the loom, we'll determine how many like chains you have to do in between. So again, do a sample up and even sample it, you know, doing just a few short rows and casting off to see what you're comfortable with for how many. I'm not going to cast this off because I'm actually going to keep doing it on, keep going on with it as a project. But like I said, this will show you kind of how it could become a basket weave. And again, we did five rows of knitting, so that's why this part looks a little longer than normal. If we were to go like that, you'd see that they'd be about the same. But again, you can change up the width. You can decide to do them smaller if you want. I did, like I said, 10 rows for each section. But again, change it up if you want. You can change up how many are knit and how many are purl very easily. And it just kind of gives you like that basket weave type pattern. Or even like a checkered board. So it's kind of in between a basket weave and a checkered board, depending on what you are going for. I would say with a basket weave, you probably would do them a little smaller than the 10 rows. I just want to make sure you could see it. Um, 
after a little while when I did it on this project. So I would say if you're doing a basket weave, maybe do half, maybe you would do five. It really depends on the gauge of the loom you're using. So go ahead and make sure to do a swatch because that will help you determine how far down you're going to want to go. So you can do a swatch of like five rows and see if you like that, or again, ten. It really depends on the loom. Because it's being smaller than a nifty knitter, ten might have worked better on a nifty knitter than this one, or five. I mean, you can really have fun with it and change it up. And again, this is kind of like being able to do either a basket weave or kind of like a checkerboard type pattern. So I hope this helps, and have a great day.